Hey everybody, welcome. Today we are in the shed kicking off a new series appropriately titled In the Shed in which I'm going to talk about all the stuff that I keep here in my shed. But before we can actually get into that, we need to talk about this shed itself and how I came about to choose this shed and my thought process behind that. This September is going to mark this shed's fifth year anniversary. I can't believe it's been five years so far. But before I even got to building this shed, I did quite a bit of research and I looked at every shed imaginable. I started off looking at plastic sheds. You know, the little kits you can pick up at the big box store. They range in size from, you know, just kind of something that leans against your house that may be four feet tall to, you know, a full like eight by 10 or 8x14, even a larger, like a normal size shed. I was very, very close to getting one. I was actually settled on something similar to this one right here. It was like a 7x9 or an 8x10, somewhere in that range, and it was about $900 or so. What I did next, though, is I went and downloaded the instruction manuals, started reading them over just to get an idea of what the build process would be like if I needed any special tools or if I needed to build anything to support the shed. This is where I ran into the problem of I'm gonna have to have a platform to build it on. Yes, the shed has like a plastic bottom. However, instructions showed concrete or a building like a deck. So I was like, okay, well, let's see how much one of those would run. I went and, you know, drew up a, the size recommended for the shed, factored in all the materials and all that. And I was like, oh, okay, well, it's gonna add a few hundred dollars to the price of this shed. So instead of like $900, we're now in that $1,200, $1,300 range. Once seeing the cost of the plastic shed with the base, I was like, well, let's take a look at like the shed kit you get at a big box store and see what those cost and try to compare and see what would I gain going that route even if I had to spend a little bit more money. So I started taking a look at those sheds. During this time I decided that that plastic shed tour wasn't an option now because of the base and the cost factor creeping up also wasn't big enough. I, I started looking at what all I was going to put into the shed and I realized that 7x9 or 8x10 whatever it was was not going to cut it and there was not really any wall storage short of me purchasing rather overpriced wall accessories accessory kits that after looking at the Costco shed in person and you know visiting the big box stores and seeing what they had to offer as well they were all about the same quality wise cost a little bit the Costco one was a little bit more quite a bit more than what the similar kind of comparable ones at other retailers but it came with the necessary materials for the floor platform so I was like okay well I can factor that in for the cost I was so close to putting the order in with Costco for this one here I just think it looks good but something just just, I was like, it was very pricey. It was about $2,600, way more than the $900 for the plastic shed. And you know, a few hundred dollars more than a similar one from Lowe's or Home Depot. But I started reading the instructions again and I started looking at how it was built. And I was like, well, I essentially have blueprints here for, for the shed based on the instruction manuals. What would it cost for me to stick build it? It's quite obvious, you know, what route I went with since I'm in a stick built shed, but why did I choose to go this route? Well, first, I have experience building homes. I did that when I was younger. So I had that skill set and I'm very comfortable with pretty much any power tool. Once I started calculating how much a stick built shed was going to cost, I was shocked. I couldn't believe how affordable the stick built shed actually was. To calculate the cost, I just I printed out some graph paper that I custom sized and you know just drew it out. I printed out like 10 sheets so I had my base floor, had my walls, roof, everything and was able to calculate my materials based off of those drawings. And for the walls, I did several. I looked at, you know, your standard T111 siding, you know, that would have been the easiest and fastest way to go about it because that would have been the sheathing and the siding. I contemplated vinyl, but at the same time, it would need to match the house. And I didn't feel like paying what the distributor for the vinyl that they used on my house. I didn't feel like paying their prices for what I consider honestly an inferior wall surface. What always was in the back of my mind was though hardy siding. The first time I ever put up hardy siding, I loved it. I like the look of it. It's a cement based product, comes pre-primed, and it doesn't rot, or at least it's not supposed to. And I was like, there's no way in the world that I'd be able to do hardy siding. 
I was surprised though that it, it came out, it was like 30 or 40 dollars cheaper than the T111. Now I'm talking about the whole shed. So that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but when you're going from a T111 plywood siding to a much nicer, I guess, premium luxury grade, you know, hardy siding, like, and I'm saving money, no brainer. I'm going this route. And it also allowed me to put up, honestly, my favorite thing about the shed, and that's the Cedar Shake Gables. So beautiful. In addition to the money savings by stick building it, the cost savings of this shed versus the one that I was looking at from Costco was about $900 before taxes, and it was only maybe $100 more than the plastic shed I was looking at. All in on this, I'm at like $1,350, $1,400. Of course, those are $2015, but it wasn't bad. So it was cheaper than all the kits, and in my opinion, a little bit better quality, but the biggest thing was, and I didn't realize this until I was putting up the walls, when my brother and I, like, we just kind of looked at each other, we were standing behind the shed, and I look up, and I'm just like, this thing is huge. This is absolutely massive, and it clicked, and we just both, it clicked at the same time for both of us, and was just eight foot walls, and that right there is a game changer. All the kits, max seven foot walls, unless you're getting a weird shed with a roof like that which would have like maybe a nine foot in the front or something like that but taper back down to seven so that increased my storage capacity and allowed for me to have a door that I didn't have to duck in to go through now where the sheds located this actually wasn't my first choice originally I was gonna have the shed over where kind of where the trampoline is right now but once I decided to up the size from that 7x9 plastic shed to my current 10x12, it wouldn't look right there. It would have just been too large and I just didn't like the placement of it. And since I was going with the stick belt with the hardy siding, I'm, you know, this is a piece of art. I, I, it's something I wanted to look at and just sit back and enjoy. So that's how it ended up where it is right now. I did have this crazy idea to put it in the hill and I priced out what I would have to do but it would have involved a concrete pad block walls waterproofing all that fun stuff but oh boy it would have been really really cool to just have it tucked back in there I wouldn't have lost any yard space the actual building of the shed didn't incur any problems Everything went actually pretty smooth. It was extremely hot. That was really the only downside is we had 102, 103 degree temperature days, and that was the actual high. That wasn't factoring in the heat index. I think at one point it was like 110, but that was really hot for Labor Day, and I think that was actually the hottest Labor Day we've ever had, um, including these past couple years. The only actual problems I faced, though, were from the HOA. Before y'all get huffy puffy about me living in an HOA and that I actually should have known better, well, I did know better. Let's see. I drew up my plans, sent them in via email, didn't have to mail anything in. I had, you know, the size of the shed, where it was going on the lot, colors, materials, whole nine yards, and I waited. I waited and waited and waited and waited some more. And then it was 30 days. Day number 30 was actually a very important and special day. The way everything was written in the covenants and bylaws and all that fun stuff was once a request is submitted to the architectural committee, they have 30 days to reply. If they do not reply, guaranteed approval. And guess what? That's what happened. So I was aware of that situation, you know, I knew better, and so I had things ready to go. I had my material lists, I had everything ready, and once day 30 lapsed, morning of day 31, all my materials were delivered. Greatest thing in the world. The HOA was upset, but honestly, there was nothing they could do. I followed their rules, I did everything I was supposed to do, and they just neglected to do their part. They could have just simply replied with a, hey, we're looking at it, and that would have sufficed for that reply of 30 days. But they didn't do that, and I caught a little bit of flack, but it really was more of just giving me a hard time since there was nothing they could do. But everything was on my side, the covenants were on my side, the law was on my side. I just got lucky and I took advantage of the situation and played the game the way it needed to be played. The 
The only thing I would have done different with this shed, and this is 100% in hindsight, is actually make it larger. A bare minimum of honestly like a 12 by 14, but more likely like a 12 by 16. The entire shed is framed with two by fours. I have the same exact decking that Connor Ward's putting in his shed. Mine's not rotten and I took like one one thousandth of the precautions that he's doing with his. So that's holding up perfectly fine. Everything, honestly, outside of the doors, which are simply just a two by four frame, some of the OSB siding and then cedar fence pickets. And those just need to be replaced due to not putting gutters on the shed and the overhangs are a little bit small, but I did that for an aesthetic reason. I wanted to keep the overhangs scaled uh, in proportion to the size of the building itself. So it didn't have these crazy long overhangs. I wanted something that was proportional so that's what I went with all the shed choices that I was looking at you know the plastic ones the kit ones the stick built ones all would have actually been a viable choice if they would meet my need the process I was going through was actually eliminating you know sheds that did not meet my needs so the biggest thing you need to do if you want to buy it or build a shed is you need to first figure out what you plan on using it for you know and that includes you know what you plan on storing on it on day one, but also think ahead to where, you know, there might be tools or equipment or certain things that you don't have right now, but you know you possibly could in the future. So you might want to account for those. The easiest way to figure out how you want, you know, how big, you know, once you figure out what you're putting in it, if you have a garage or, you know, your driveway, mark out different size areas, you know, eight by 10, 10 by 12, you know, and then place your items, you know, your lawnmowers, wheelbarrows, things like that. Just kind of place them on the floor. That'll give you an idea for, you know, how much floor space you have. Then you can kind of see like, oh, I've, this shed here has this nice loft so I can, you know, put some of this stuff up on there and look at the dimensions of the loft and plan all that out because doing that will, one, it'll probably end up saving you money in the long run. You might spend more money on the shed, but you won't regret, you know, not getting something big enough. Even though it's like, I don't regret the size of this shed. I, you know, I wish it was bigger now, but I didn't, factor in owning you know three different lawn mowers multiple tillers multiple edgers all this equipment six or seven one gallon hand cans plus a backpack sprayer plus a boom sprayer never never crossed my mind five years ago so that's the only reason why i want it bigger now and so once you determine your size you know you have once you have everything laid out you know in your little grid that you made and you know driveway or the garage I, I would almost i would treat it like you're installing flooring so i would add you know 15 to 20 percent to that size and account for like waste you know that you would account for like a tile floor or hardwood floor but use that and that would just upsize you essentially pretty much to the next size shed so if you got a 10 by 12 you know if you can afford to you know, bump it up to a 12 by 14 and that way you're kind of future proofing for you know the unexpected your skill set's going to factor in quite a bit with this as well. You know, I'm fortunate enough to where I, I've built houses before. I'm familiar with construction methods. I wasn't worried a single bit about stick framing this. Um, yeah, the plastic kit would have been easy. Would have been you know a few hours. Same with like the prefab wooden kits you get at the store. But so factor in your skill set as well. You know you may you know be able to stick build this. Awesome, go for it. Um, you know, you may be more comfortable with a wooden shed kit or a, you know, a plastic shed kit. The only thing I say, don't ever get the metal shed kit. And that's just because, holy cow, you won't have any fingers because you'll cut them off. So here's my shed, what I did to build it and the process I went about and, you know, figuring out what exactly I needed. Hopefully it'll help you all out along the way. So get what fits you and, you know, what fits your budget, your needs. So this brings us to the end of, you know, episode one of in the shed. Next episode, we're actually going to uh, dig into the equipment and we're gonna talk about my absolute favorite piece of equipment. You may know what it is, but you probably don't. It's gonna be fantastic and I can't wait to get to it. So we will see you then.